Hey guys, Jonas here. So it's day six uh, of the seven day accelerator. And today we're gonna go through bonus bets and how, how to optimize them using two key methods. Uh, I'm gonna go through the psychology of risk and return. So some psychological biases and those sorts of things that are applicable to both the betting world and the, the general finance world as well. Some of you should find that pretty interesting. Uh, and then finally, I'm gonna go through how professional bettors approach betting from both a psychology standpoint and also in terms of execution. So firstly, bonus bets. So there are really two key methods to use to convert them into cash efficiently. And again, sort of reiterating, the reason why the, the bookies offer so many bonus bet uh, promotions is because bettors are just terrible at converting them into uh, into cash. So there's a, there's a great opportunity here for those who can actually do this efficiently. And so there are two key methods to use. Method one here is really just about finding value in this 10 to $20 price range. Um, and I'll go through two examples that should make it obvious why this 10 to $20 is, is sort of a sweet spot. So example one here, imagine we've just got a player A and player B who can win, no one else can win. They're both 50% chance of winning. So they're fair odds of $2. The bookies always have margin in their books. So they'll typically be $1.90, $1.90 in this instance. So we have a $10 bonus bet on player A. If player A wins, we end up with $10 multiplied by the $1.90, which is $19 but we don't keep the stake, the $10 stake, so minus 10 bucks, so we end up with $9 cash. So we've got a 50% chance of that occurring, and then we've got a 50% chance of just losing the bonus bet. So what that means in, in terms of expectancy is 50% multiplied by the $9 of cash. If player A wins, it equals 450. So we're literally expected to convert the $10 bonus bet into $4.50 cash, so the expectancy in terms of conversion is 45%. And that's obviously, that's not great, not at all, not good at all. Our system converts it uh, over 90%. But that's, so that's example one. The example two here, it's the same, um, same scenario in that all the runners in a race, uh, all the players in a race have an equally likely chance of winning. However, we've got 10 players here instead of two. So, so their fair odds are $10. The book is gonna be slightly under the fair odds, $9 in this instance. And again, player A, if we back player A with $10 bonus bet, if player A wins, we're gonna end up with $80 of cash. So that's 10 multiplied by the $9 odds minus our stake of 10 equals 80. Obviously, if anyone else wins, we lose 10 bucks. So what that means in terms of expectancy is we've got a 10% chance of converting our $10 bonus bet into 80 cash. So here's our expectancy, which is 10% multiplied by 80 cat, $80 eight bucks, so we're expected to convert at 80%. So you can see the bigger the prices, the greater the conversion here. The only last link really here to add is you wanna get close to fair fair odds. So if the, the fair odds here are $10, if the bookie was uh, $10, um, any of these runners, and back we back that with a bonus bet, the expectancy is actually the reciprocal of the odds. So. Um, or the, the loss on conversion is a reciprocal of the odds. So what that means is if we backed here at $10 when it truly is 10, we'd be expected to convert at 90%. And these are essentially the op op uh, opportunities that the bonus bet tips look for. So we're, we're betting fair odds in that 10 to $20 price range, expecting to convert at 90% plus. So that's method one. Method two, um, and one thing I'll say to, again, just before I move on is there's obviously some risk here and the risk I refer to is just variance. So you'll get this $80 uh, win literally just one in every 10 times in the long term. So you, there's gonna be variance. Some days are gonna be amazing. You get all these bonus bet winners. Other other days you might get go days in a row without having one bonus bet winner. So there's variance. So that's something to prepare for. Um, and you can do that through splitting your bonus bets and just sort of spreading them across all the bonus bet tips with our system. That's gonna reduce your variance, but there still is, um, you know, the, the ups and downs there. Method two has essentially zero variance. So this just uses Betfair. I've, I've created another webinar that went through Betfair and, and there's plenty of information on that in the members resources section, but I'll just go through this method here and it just re all you need to do is find uh, a bookie with close to f close to Betfair lay price uh, odds in that sort of ten to twenty dollar price range again is 
is quite a sweet spot. You'll often find a lot of liquidity there and you'll get a good conversion. So in this instance, if we find a player or a horse at $19 and Betfair's 19 to lay, this is, you can punch the numbers into the, the bonus bets calculator. So we back with a $20 bonus bet at 19, we lay $20 at 19 on Betfair. We're expected to convert at, uh, at 90%. So we're expected to lose 10% on the conversion. Um, if we didn't actually lay, uh, the conversion, the expected conversion is higher because we're avoiding the Betfair commission here. But this is a really risk-free way of con converting bonus bets into cash. And it's especially useful if you've got like a really big bonus bet that you don't want to risk and that you can't split for some reason. Neds and Ladbrokes and points bet, uh, for example, don't let you split bonus bets. Cool, so they're the two methods. All right, moving on. So the psychology of risk and return. So there are, we could talk about, I could talk about this for hours, but I just wanted to come up with sort of a one to two minute summary of what what's most relevant for us. So essentially, with anything in risk and return, there's there's upside, there's downside, there's variance, uh, and there are some common psychological biases that are out there. And probably the the main one to to know is this first one: he loss aversion. And this is a very fancy looking chart here, but essentially all it's saying is people tend to be risk averse with regards to financial losses and gains. So uh, what that means in terms of a chart is. Typically, people find that a loss of, for example, $100 is quite painful, whereas a gain of $100 is somewhat, uh, it, you know, it, they get some positive utility out of it, but not as much as the negative utility they get from a loss here. So that's kind of the first thing to know with, with these core biases. And I guess what's, what's the application there? Well, stake sizing is important. That's going to help you. Uh, create a lower variance um, for you. Uh, but that's the first bias to know. Second one that I think is most relevant to us is small sample bias. This is really common in, in betting. You hear about someone who's tipped two winners in a row and we think they're a genius. Uh, you really want to use, you want to be aware of what is a reasonable sample or not. And we're talking dozens and dozens and even hundreds of samples. Uh, that's when you can start actually working out if, if someone has found some true edge or not. Recency bias, this is all about, it's similar to small sample bias, except it's just more focused on just what's happened recently. So someone's had a couple of winners in a row, it's like, wow, they're on a hot streak. Well, it's kind of like, well, hang on a minute, what about how they went before that? So that's a pretty obvious one there, um, but one to be aware of. And then some other ones here, so the gambler's fallacy, so this one's all about the the thought, and it's very common in in betting to to think for people to think that if for example there have been six heads in a row the next one the 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 tails is just due so that might be might seem silly in a heads or tails scenario but you you might think about that in in a, a bad streak in in sports six losses in a row are they due to win but it's like well are they uh, if if each case is independent then this this is completely irrational uh, outcome bias. So this is really it's it's almost the same as uh, hindsight bias. So it's which which is all about in betting. You, all you can do is make a make an informed decision at the time with the information that you had at the time. You can't look back and go, oh, hang on a minute, I should have done this, should have done that after the fact. Um, it's very common, but it's good to know that one. Uh, availability bias. So this one's all about what's in your short-term memory. We tend to have biases that are in our short-term memory. And what's in our short-term memory might be uh, what we've recently experienced or so we've heard from someone. Uh, and then we discount all the other information that we've got. Uh, so it's a common bias there. The effect heuristic. So this one's, in simply put, this is just about betting emotionally as opposed to rationally. So if you want to make, if you want to optimize long-term returns in betting or in finance, uh, you want to take the emotions out of it. Absolutely, it's good to be aware of other people's emotions and how they might impact prices. Um, but you want to take your own emotions out of it and essentially be a robot that just executes. Then confirmation bias. This is a pretty, this is one of my favorites actually, and this is the one where we've got biases. Some are known to us, others are, are subconscious, but we have a tendency to look for 
to look for data, look for stories, look for evidence that support our own beliefs. So uh, it's just a tendency for whatever reason that most people have. Um, and it's, it, it, what is it, what is the impact of that? Well, we're less open to new ways of thinking, less open to uh, new information, new data. So that can be a big problem. All right, so moving into the last section for today. So how professional bettors approach a betting day or a bet. So I guess with betting, firstly, you need to identify edge. You need to identify it and and calculate how much edge there is that you've identified. And that's not always a known. Um, but once you've come up with that, then you can, you can sort of think about it in three ways. One is how much you're expected to profit per bet. So if your edge is 5% and you're having a $100 bet, you can expect to make $5 from that bet. The second way to look at it is the profit per day. So you can think, okay, I'm going to have 100 bets today. Uh, they've all got $5% uh, 5 of edge. That means I'm, I'm turning over 10000 so I'm expected to make $50. You might look at it that way, uh, or 500 rather. Uh, and then the third way is to think about things in terms of a probability distribution. So this is a little bit more complex, but essentially run a simulation of all the outcomes. And, and there'll be tales where you you might absolutely clean up on the upside or you might absolutely get destroyed on the downside. But thinking about things in terms of a probability distribution. Uh, and then, so how does how does this sort of apply to professional betters? So as I said, first thing is finding edges. Uh, the second part is quantifying them. So how much edge do you have truly? Is it 0.1% over a bookie? Is it 10%? Is it 30%? And then really, it's just about stake sizing after that. And one of the earlier webinars touched on the Kelly criterion, which looks to optimize stake sizing. So check out that webinar if you want more information. Um, and essentially, then it's really just about executing like a robot for a professional better. So they've, they've gone through this process and then they just execute like a robot, no emotions, uh, it's purely just about numbers. All right, that's it for today. Uh, and it sort of wraps up the seven day accelerator, except for the last video, which will just be a, a summary of all the key principles from that, from the um, the first six days. I'm gonna go through the, just the key principles there and sort of common traps to look for as well. If you've got any questions, hit me up on Telegram. Cheers.